Welcome to catch. Hello. Hello. How are you? That was showing you my, my mushroom bounty, but that was just a small percentage of my mushroom bounty. Look at these. Woo! I wow. know. I see. Oh, look at that. I have Everybody. More. I, have more. I have more all over the kitchen. We'll see. We'll see more throughout the Chef Philip stream. Steel. Everybody, welcome to our second live stream of the Mushroom Council's month-long series on Kitch. Today, I'm so excited to present Chef Philip Sear. He is the chef owner of Comedor in Austin, Texas, as well as the co-founder of Assembly. And I got to say, am I allowed to, to call what I just saw mushroom en place? Because yeah. that was really, really neat. Mm. Chef, what are we making today? Um, I'm going to do a twist on a traditional um, dish here, which is not when I say here, I'm in Texas. It's actually not a traditional dish here in Texas. It's a traditional New York dish, but um, of a, a oh, where, pastrami, where, where you are. Yeah, we're going to do a deli, a deli item, a pastrami sandwich, but instead of using uh, beef, uh, the beef brisket, we're going to use oyster mushrooms. We're going to do a similar treatment to what we would do to a beef, uh, but with mushrooms, we're going to create a really delicious sandwich that is completely, um, the, the main part of the sandwich is completely plant-based. Now, I am going to put cheese on the sandwich, so the whole sandwich is not plant-based, but if you were to leave the cheese off, it would be uh, totally plant-based. Although, saying plant-based isn't really accurate because mushrooms are not plants, nor are they animals. They're their own category so um but yes it is completely life. yeah very completely meat free so that's what we're going to create today and i just have these here for show um because they're again they're so beautiful these came from some of my mushroom suppliers here in austin texas um these pink ones are from Marisol soul mushrooms uh similar yeah i know Your right name. You, you, know. you know what i realized <laughs> chef folks for everyone that's joining me, I'm Marisol Salazar. I'm a food writer, recipe developer, and cook based here in New York City. So Chef Spear definitely has a challenge for him today, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with something that we are very familiar with. So tell us more about these Marisol mushrooms. Um, Marisol is a mushroom farmer um, or a mycologist in Bassop, Texas. Uh, I also have some mushrooms here from Small Hold, which is a... Um, they're actually based in Brooklyn. Um, they now have a farm here in the Central Texas area, so they're good, great friends of ours. And then we just have a great um, kind of micro community here between different mushroom growers, high five mycology, um, Kitchen Pride, etc. Um, we just we uh, this morning I woke up and. I'm like, hey, I need some mushrooms. So I called like three different uh, mushroom farmers. And, and before I knew it, I, I mean, literally, I have 30 pounds of mushrooms here um, that we can play with and make delicious, beautiful, edible bouquets out of um, and just set it, all, set it all up. So that's, that's kind of the community here, not only the food community here in Austin, but really, again, the micro or microfile community here is so supportive, so excited, and so excited about mushrooms as we are to pair with the Mushroom Council. So I'm really looking forward to this. Bro, yeah, let's get cooking. I want to see what this sandwich looks like. All right, cool. Well, first and foremost, uh, I kind of want to go through the ingredients of what the sandwich uh, will entail. I have here a, um, a black pumpernickel um, that we're going to use to do our pastrami sandwich or Reuben. Um, I have these you know, again, these beautiful mushrooms, but these are kind of for show. They're not actually the ones I'm going to use, but these red or pink oyster mushrooms here, um, I, I have some put aside, are what I'll use. And what's what's going to be awesome about this is once we do the pastrami treatment to them, they're actually going to have a little, little bit of resemblance to what a sliced uh, beef pastrami might look like. So that was important to me, and that's exciting. And we'll have some visual... Some cool visual there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue to put the mushrooms all around me. So the first step of this is we need to brine our mushroom. Now, I started brining some mushrooms yesterday, so we're going to do a little bit of TV magic, right? So we're going to start, we're going to kind of skip through 
uh, some pieces of the process. I'm going to show you every part of it. So I already have some brine over here on the fire. Um, and this brine, it's a 3% salt solution. Uh, there's a touch of vinegar, a little bit of sugar. And then we're going to add some aromatics. And I have here some fresh thyme, um, some bay leaf. I've already thrown some uh, other aromatics, some garlic and such in there. And then for me, for this, for this brine, I have a little bit of black and white peppercorn, both, uh, which I've toasted, some dried bay leaf, and a little bit of fennel seed, and really just a touch of cumin, because I like to put that in because it kind of brings out the flavor of the, the caraway seed uh, and the cumin seed on the bread. So that's my brine solution. And I wanted to show you that and bring it all the way up to heat. And I just wanted to show you that now, typically I would take this brine, I would toast the spices, I would bust up the garlic, kind of hit that, hit that time, get some of the essential oils going, then I would drop it in there, bring it, to, bring it to temperature, let it steep for a little bit, and then I would cool it down and pour it over my mushrooms. And we're gonna skip a few of those steps. Um, we're gonna bring that to temperature, and then I'm gonna pour it over these beautiful pink oyster mushrooms here. Now, do you see that color? in there mm -hmm. of those mushrooms aren't they aren't they gorgeous and so i'm gonna treat this mushroom as a whole piece right i'm gonna leave sorry i'm gonna leave it intact and so it's almost like a chunk of meat right and i'm gonna pour this here to brine just like so I'm leaving it a little bit warm. I'd probably normally cool it down just a bit. I'm leaving it a little bit warm though, so it can do a quick, a quicker brine. Since it's not a brisket, it doesn't really affect, it won't affect uh, the overall texture of the meat negatively or the overall color of the meat negatively like it would if it were beef. Um, and I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. All right, and we're gonna pull out our brined mushrooms. Now, I don't know, there's so many fun and interesting facts about mushrooms. I mean, we've really gone from, from society that is a little bit kind of in the dark of what mushrooms, how they are, how they work in, in, in our ecosystem, how they, um, how long they've been around, how they grow, you know, what, what the fruiting bodies or the mushrooms are, what mycelium is. Um, that's all, it's all been a, quite a mystery for much of our society for a long time. But what's exciting is that that's really coming to light now. And people are understanding all the different uses for mushrooms beyond just um, really delicious, flavorful food. How did you Marisol, get started? Have you, Marisol, have you learned anything about mushrooms lately? Well, you know, I did learn through a little bit of peeking that Comedor serves Texas mushrooms. What are those? <laughs> well, they're just mushrooms that are grown in Texas. Um, oh. are those te <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we also have Huila Coche on there, which is uh, another fungus that we get from, uh, we actually get this Huila Coche from Oaxaca um, in Mexico. And, um, but... Yeah, our Texas mushrooms, is a, they're a mix of mushrooms. We get them from different mycologists, some of the ones I named earlier. Uh, we like to kind of spread the love around. Uh, we may get anything from oyster mushrooms to royal trumpets to lion's manes mushrooms. We might get some um, baby, baby portobello mushrooms or cremini mushrooms. And it really just depends on which of the mushroom um, suppliers are going to. But we like to do a nice mix of mushrooms mm -hmm. um, so you have different textures and flavors throughout them. We also, at our company uh, assembly, we do a bidia taco, which is traditionally made with braised goat. Uh, we do this to mimic um, that texture with the lion's mane's mushroom because what we found is with lion's mane's mushrooms, um, you can mimic a protein or meat-like texture. Um, now, I'm not under the, I don't believe that mushrooms should be a direct replacement for meat. Mushrooms should shine and, and be um, enjoyed and celebrated on their own. However, there are some cool ways that you can replace them um, for a meat texture and something that you might traditionally crave or want. So how I think that's fun to, go ahead. How important are mushrooms in Mexican cuisine? Almost in Mexican cuisine, it's, it's, I don't 
how important are they? That's yeah. a really interesting question. Um, you know, I think the most, um, probably the most used or most known fungus in Mexican cuisine, Mexican cuisine is huilacoche, which mm -hmm. is a fungus that grows outside of corn. Um, okay. You see it in a lot of cooking. It's delicious. It's earthy. It's a little bit sweet. Um, it's beautiful. Um, and that is probably the most used, most important aspect of Mexican cooking. And what happens is, you know, when we, um, when, when corn is grown in Mexico and it is used, you know, some of it's used immediately, some of it's dried, some of it's nixtamalized, so you can make different masa preparations from tortillas to tamales to hiraches mm -hmm. uh, and, and on and on and on. Um, and when you have that surplus of corn that you don't really, aren't really using for the, your community anymore, then a fungus called huilacoche grows on it. When that fungus grows on it, that fungus is edible. And interestingly, you don't really see that in the U.S. Oh. Um, do, you know, do you know why? Why? C can you guess? Uh, well, is it number... because of pesticides? We use pesticides yeah, in non-GMO not... corn or GMO exactly. corn? Exactly. All of the above, because the <laughs> number one number one cash crop in America is corn. So um, you don't see corn. There is no surplus of corn. There is no um, delicious delicacy of uh, huilacoche growing on the outside of corn because things like Roundup and, and such don't allow us to do that. But we're not going to go too deep into that because maybe some of that's controversial. I don't know. I mean, it's just real life to me. So we're going to switch gears. Uh, and I want to show you our brined mushrooms. Now, aren't these gorgeous? Does this remind you a little bit of like anatomy class maybe? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but in like the most delicious, amazing way. Um, and so here I have some of the Marisol mushrooms from Bastrop, Texas, uh, one of our favorite mushroom farms. And I've taken these pink mushrooms and I've brined them in that delicious brine that we are talking about. And now I'm going to do a little more of a treatment to them. So... Let's look at how I'm going to do that. And this chef is you are mimicking the brining. Are you mimicking the traditional brining if you would and say of the sandwich of a traditional yes, sandwich? Yes, correct. Ah, so okay. traditionally you would take, you would brine, you would do a pastrami uh, or uh, brine of, it's a brisket. It's a beef brisket traditionally, mm -hmm. right? So you have that. It's about a, you know anywhere from six to ten pound um, cut of the beef. You take that. You trim it. You then brine it. Um, you have a corned beef brine. You have pastrami brine. You have different brines. Uh, from that point, from that brining point, when it really starts to turn into uh, different traditional uses, is whether you. Uh, you, you continue to braise it, maybe you smoke it, et cetera. So for this pastrami, we're going to smoke it. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the mushrooms out of the brine. Now that I've taken out of the brine, you can see that that color, I mean, that red is really, or that pink has really come out. And so I'm already in this, like, when you see a, a beautiful, delicious piece of pastrami and it's sliced, it has that nice, like, pink in the middle. And we're going to see some of that. So, but one thing I'm going to do, it's a little bit different. This is going to mimic some flavor and kind of uh, also speed up the process because, you know, we don't need to smoke these and slow cook them for eight to 12 or more hours because um, we're not breaking down all the protein in that beef. In fact, mm -hmm. mushrooms don't have much protein at all. Do you know which mushroom has the highest protein count? Mm, I'm going to take a shot in the dark. Anoki? That is quite a shot in the dark. The answer is no. <laughs> Enoki. King Trumpet. Um, <laughs> no, not King Trumpet. Um, the answer is actually Lion's Mane. And to, really, most mushrooms have a pretty low protein count, especially the mushrooms you might buy in the store. But the Lion's Mane's mushrooms has almost equal protein count to chicken. It's got like 20 to 22 percent, um, whereas a chicken probably has closer to like 25 percent. So it's almost like a uh, nutri nutritious when it comes. There's other nutrient and other health aspects, many, many to, to mushrooms. But when it comes to like what you're putting in your body and your body does need some protein, uh, it's mm -hmm. a great replacement for that. So one thing I'm going to do is I have a little bit of a rub here. And this is some of the, the um, brining spices. Uh, as well as just a, a good amount of salt and black pepper. And so I'm going to use this. And this is what, after I brine, I might rub the pastrami with this. I'm going to mm -hmm. put a bit of it in here. 
And then I have, and this is kind of a, uh, maybe, a maybe a little hack or, or a cheat, if you will. This is actual corn husk ash. Wow. Uh, so I know. Have you been to Cosme in New York? Yes, I have. I've have you had the corn? Several times. Yeah, same. Have you had the corn husk meringue there made by yes, uh, Daniela yes, Sotelines yeah. years ago? Okay, great. Well, that is an amazing dessert for a small, it might be my one of my favorite desserts in the entire country. Um, I've actually had the pleasure of making them with her once in my restaurant, but that's a whole other story. Um, but that <laughs> meringue is made with burnt corn husk. Um, uh -huh. That's why it has that, that color. speckled gray color, color. Yeah, like my hair, see? It's, just like it. <laughs> it's beautiful something, so, something like that um all right so here i have my brined mushrooms i have created a dark smoky ashy rub and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna just kind of do this treatment mm -hmm. to the mushrooms and this spice and this ash is going to have kind of that bitter smoky charred flavor that you would get from hours and hours of smoking and i'm going to drop this into my kitchen smoker here which is set for about um 220 degrees and i'm going to do that for uh, about 45 minutes. And mm -hmm. that's how we're going to smoke this. Um, it's going to be a little bit higher tint. You probably go up to 250, go for 45 minutes because I want to retain some of that texture of the mushroom. Question for um, you. Sean. Yeah, please. What if, what if folks don't have a kitchen smoker? Is there, is there an appliance they could buy or an alternative method to smoke their mushroom? Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't have a kitchen smoker either. That's not a real thing. Uh, so I, I, have an, I have an oven over here. I was making a, <laughs> a, a little bit of a joke. So uh, I would smoke it outside in your smoker, which is normally mm -hmm. what I would do, which is what when I pull these out, which has already actually been done. Um, and uh, you called me out. When I <laughs> Sorry to blow your cover. Yeah, I wish I had a cool little counter under counter kitchen smoker in this apartment that'd be <laughs> awesome um it probably that uh, this is a newer apartment so um all the smoke detectors are hardwired in so that would like you can't like just take the batteries out so it'd probably be a big issue if there's actually <laughs> a smoker in here um but there's other ways you can do you can smoke you can um there's a lot of there's a newer it's well it's actually been around for a long time but more companies now are making the smoking guns wow. um where you can take different kind of wood chips. Um, I typically smoke on uh, white oak or maybe mm -hmm. even pecan wood, which are both Texas woods, um, Texas hardwoods. And then you can take those chips and put them into the, uh, I want to say bowl, but I don't think that's what we call it. Um, and then we light it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then <laughs> a, um, <laughs> there's an apparatus that sucks the oxygen through and then kicks out the smoke. You can put it into a container and you can get that smoke flavor. If mm -hmm. you wanted to use, that's a cold smoke. That's really great for like crudos or smoked fish, something like that. If you wanted to do that to achieve a cooked smoked texture, you would also have to bake it and then probably finish with the smoking from the smoking gun. Um, mm -hmm. I would just use a regular smoke smoker outside again, smoke over hardwood. Uh, I prefer, pecan white oak you see especially in texas you see mesquite smoking things of the sort um so yeah i would typically do it outside got All it right. we're gonna get into this bread um and what i want to do we're gonna make a sandwich i'm just gonna make this just sandwich for me so um but i might go ahead and make you know let's make two sandwiches so i'm slicing this bread i like to slice the bread about half an inch thick. We don't want it too thick because we really want to be able to just bite through it and taste all. This is a very flavorful bread, but we want to taste all the other pieces of the sandwich. For the folks in the back, what bread are we using, Chef? This here is a black Russian bread. 
Um, it's similar to like a pumpernickel. It does have, it is made with a rye flour, so it has the flavors of rye. Just wouldn't be a traditional bread that you would use for a Reuben, but it will work. And it's something I want to use uh, mm -hmm. because I really love the flavor of it. And then it's topped with uh, caraway and cumin seed. Yeah, it's right. very Next, I want to go ahead and put together our dressing. So what I've done since, you know, not hopefully not everyone watching the stream is um, is just lives their life in a professional kitchen um, because that because that's just really sad life. Um, <laughs> no, it's an amazing life. Um, as I've done, how I can I've made this in a way that you can make this at home. So I have here uh, Annie's Organic Thousand Island Dressing. And so I'm gonna take, which is basically a remoulade, right? So I'm gonna take, so if you do wanna make your own, look up a remoulade recipe, basically it's an emulsion with a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of shallot garlic and um, some, some pickles. I like to use cornerstones in that personally. Um, and maybe a touch of like a Dijon. And that's how you can make a uh, remoulade. Um, I also like to take some of this whole grain mustard. And that's, this is not just straight whole grain seed. This is actual mustard. So you have mustard powder, you have whole grain uh, mustard seed and vinegar and then seasoning, of course. And this is gonna be the dressing for my sandwich. Now I know that's not super traditional, but nothing we do is that traditional, um, mm -hmm. right? I'm doing. I'm in Texas making this and doing my own little take on it with mushrooms. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's where we are. But that's going to be the dressing for my sandwich. Next, I want to show you that I have some sliced cheese. And I've taken um, you know, some of our cheese and, and just sliced it just like you would. You know, whether you could order this from a grocery store, you could take a block of cheese if you have a slicer in your restaurant or in your home and slice it. And so I just have some cheese here. I like to use, this is Emmentaler. Um, then I have my slices of bread and then I have a sauerkraut here. And this mm -hmm. sauerkraut is actually provided by a farmer here that I work with. Um, my, my partner has um, a farm business called Urban American Farmer. Um, Urban American Farmers actually has um, their own channel on Kitsch, which is really cool. And one of the teammates of Urban American Farmer is this woman, Hannah Bell, who not only farms, but she makes amazing cured, fermented, um, and pickled products. So she takes anything surplus or extra from the season and makes, makes um, different pickles and fermentations. And so we, she might make anything from like a really healthy gut um, drink to that's a different fermented turmeric and such to um, just some basic sauerkraut. And so I have some of her sauerkraut here. So shout out to Hand Can Products um, from Austin, Texas, um, fresh grown um, cabbage from over the, the fall and winter season now turned into pickled sauerkraut. Awesome. Alrighty. So tell me some more things that you've learned about mushrooms lately. I'll tell you some more that I've learned. Well, I wanted to ask a question. One of the folks from uh, our table asked, have you seen Fantastic Fungi? Yeah, you want to hear a good story about that movie? Yeah. <laughs> it's not really about the movie, but so. <laughs> well, we have the film just... coming on later this month. Oh, do we? I want to be, be there for that. Um, yeah. Or, or there. Be, I could be, be anywhere where you because are. it's because it's kids. Yeah, I could literally yeah. be anywhere to watch that. Yeah. Um, so I, when I had first started dating my my partner, um, who I just referred to earlier, we, we um, which is about three years ago, uh, Fantastic Fungi had just been released, and we missed the show in Austin. It sold out really quickly. It was part. Of, it was part of the Austin film. Uh, society. So to surprise and impress her, um, I actually bought us a ticket to Chicago to to catch a showing there. I the minute the tickets were released in Chicago, I purchased them. Bought a ticket to Chicago to go see the showing there. Uh, made a big deal about missing it here and that we're never going to get to see it because it's all over the country. <laughs> it's never going to come back to Austin. It's never going to be on Netflix. Um, mm -hmm. And 
and we flew to Chicago and watched it and ate at some amazing restaurants and and uh, it was really fun and I think that kind of sealed the deal with our relationship. We're still together now. Um, but yeah, Fantastic Fungi was like a, our first um, out of town trip together to see that show, um, that documentary, that movie, whatever. Wow. Uh, we for it. And it is so good. Um, so yes, I've seen it. And since mm -hmm. I've seen it, you know, maybe a dozen times or so. Wow, this is it. mushroommatch.com. That's great. <laughs> exactly. I was a real fun guy that night. <laughs> um, I, couldn't, I couldn't help it. I was going to um, ask a personal question, if you would. Not that we already haven't gotten personal on this already. When, yeah. when did you start cooking with mushrooms? You know, I know Comedor is modern Mexican. You're from South Texas. And, mm -hmm. you know, you mentioned the you know, how mushrooms play a role in Mexican cooking, but when did you start playing around with mushrooms? Um, so I, in another life for many years, I worked at a Japanese restaurant. Um, and before that, most of my training was classic French training and there weren't a lot of uh, mushrooms in, mushrooms weren't an emerging trend, although I don't think this is an emerging trend, but some people may look at it that way um, at that time. But when I really moved into Japanese cooking, uh, we were getting amazing matsutakes and cooking with maitakes and shiitakes. And we were cooking uh, with like royal trumpet mushrooms. We did like a piece of nigiri with some scored royal trumpet mushroom that we sous vide and then seared, and finished with some like shoju butter and things of that sort. So you know, really through that time, and that was, you know, from the early 2000s on, mm -hmm. um, really got excited about mushrooms and the different ways they can be used. I started using mushrooms in desserts. I had a mushroom, I had a smoked, uh, smoked chocolate and mushroom dessert in like 2008 or nine, uh, mm -hmm. which kind of, kind of blew, blew people's minds at that time, but it was really good, really exciting. Um, so yeah, I, I, for several years now for, um, you know, 15 plus years, I've been really excited about mushrooms more so recently. Um, I've had found a little bit more time in my life or taken a little bit more time to be outside and mm -hmm. not in the four walls of a kitchen. So um, I've been able to spend some more time learning about uh, wild foods and foraging, um, but also just like having the availability of mushrooms Mm -hmm. so, so much more now having my, you know, my colleagist growing mushrooms, having, um, you know, organizations like the mushroom council really pushing to get more varieties of mushrooms out there and more more grocery stores more farmers markets etc like uh we've had a lot more fun experimenting with what you can do with mushrooms in a in a different way with newer varieties of mushrooms that are more accessible and more consistently accessible that is awesome oh my gosh so all right let's go ahead you. I wanted to, you know, as you were cooking it up, you know, taking those mushrooms out of the oven. Um, yes. If you could talk to us, what's assembly? Oh, yeah. I'd love to talk to you about assembly. So assembly was, um, is another company we have. It's another hospitality and food company. Um, you know, assembly started one way and has evolved, as most businesses do, into something else. Um, so let me real quick, I pulled these out of the oven. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and can, can you see them here? Awesome, excellent. And we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna let these cool a bit. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna take them off the tray. Yeah, those are gorgeous. And then, yeah, they're great. So assembly was created out of, um, out of a need to continue to, to engage in the local food economy as well as um, pay our staff um, when in the mass shutdowns of, of businesses in 2020. Um, so uh, with assembly, we, we knew that we wanted to keep selling food. We knew we wanted to keep supporting our farmers. 85% of the food that we use at Comedor is, is, is from central Texas. And so we decided, you know, rather than just create this like on the fly to go menu, that we could just try to bring in, you know, several hundred dollars a day. Um, we wanted to really do something different and kind of, we saw, my business partner and I saw that this was probably gonna last just a, longer than just a few weeks, which we found out to be very true. Um, 
unfortunately, but it, it taught us a lot of lessons, uh, a lot of mm -hmm. lessons about sustainability, um, a yeah. lot of lessons about the food system, which I'm sure we can get into a little bit more as well. Um, but sustainability and mushrooms, you know, are, are a big, a big uh, synergy there. But yeah. I, um, with assembly, we were able to create food, take it to a 85% of the way prepared. And then when you got it home, you know, to enjoy the food of Comedor, you can do it at home by finishing at home. You can, it can also be an activity, right? Mm -hmm. And in this activity of connection and cooking for your people, for your family, when you're in this home and you're tired of cooking the same thing over and over again, uh, especially through yeah. that time when there was a little bit of scarcity of some of those products due to, to food system breakdowns. Um, we were able to provide food from local farms to your door rather than, um, the sold out grocery stores. And so yeah. that was so such, uh, you know, there's so many silver linings to this time in our life where we understood that the local food economy and the local food system and sustainability in that was very, very, very important. So assembly was a way to continue to do that, continue to, to engage with the food economy, continue to mm -hmm. keep our employees paid and continue to cook and remain um, in business. It has since evolved to, uh, to a, a virtual events, meal kit, um, chef curator amplifier community um, where we cook meal kits we do virtual events we have production studios we have production teams who mm. are bringing you this today uh you know this is a little bit different than just a laptop being open we have different angles etc um and then we can cook and create these amazing meals ship them nationally to your door we own the distribution points we own the creation points we own the marketing and production like visual and audio production points um, we actually have an event on kitsch in april 27th where you can buy the mushroom foragers excuse me the mushroom cultivators pie um, and have it in your home and we'll ship it to you you pop on the kitsch and we'll do this virtual event so that's what the assembly does kind of high level um, and it's a really great uh, fun and fun experience awesome. all right let's that's go to the next steps of this um, sandwich Are you ready i'm ready all right well, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna I'm going to take this whole cutting board to our other spot. Oh, no, I'm not. Yeah, I am. <laughs> That's how I'm going to do it. We're going to on our toes. <laughs> Tricked you. All right. And basically going to set up a station right here. Wow. So I have a Komal mm -hmm. or a griddle top on my stove and I have that heating up. I was heating up my um, my uh, brine there. So I've had this on, I'm gonna drop the heat a little bit because it looks like it's smoking, get a little hot. I'm gonna throw some fat on here to get it nice and greased. This is just a neutral oil. Mm -hmm. um, I use a grapeseed oil. I don't like to use oil that has too strong of a flavor uh, because we really want the flavor to come from the food, not the oil. Is this a, like, a medium high heat? What kind of heat are we using? looks like it's pretty high at this point so <laughs> i've dropped the heat but yes it would be a medium high heat that's the goal all right and i'm going to start toasting this bread awesome so as stated earlier we have our dressing i've created this dressing this is more of a i may say maybe a ukrainian dressing and then here i have a um a kraut that has been created again by uh, one of our local makers here, Han Can. I have our Marisol mushrooms that have been smoked in my secret, super secret high-tech kitchen smoker. Um, yes. And they have been dusted with our um, corn husk ash as well as our pastrami rub. I've got a hot gomal here and I'm getting a nice toast on this bread. Look at that. That's beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat in the back down further. Are you going to offer this at Comedor, like a special or something? Uh, Ruben? No, absolutely oh. not. Okay. I guess mushroom, then, Ruben, I would, I would buy that. And then I'm going to throw my, but maybe something we could do to assembly, which is another cool thing about assembly is it allows us to, you know, there's no, uh, there's nothing at assembly saying we can or can't do food a certain way, which I love. And mm -hmm. there's really nothing to Comodor either, but we are a we are a Mexican restaurant. So, mm -hmm. um, so here I'm searing these mushrooms. Uh, I have my bread toasting still. 
I'm going to go ahead. Can you see that view pretty well on your side? Oh, yeah, it looks amazing. I'm going to have you come to my clip? kitchen and do my setup. <laughs> <laughs> we can do that. Uh, well, you're in New York. Is that what you said? What part of New yep, York? Yep, so just, just bounce on over, you know, just close by in Manhattan. Manhattan, right on. Um, are there any uh, restaurants in Manhattan that you're, or in maybe in over right over in Brooklyn that you're enjoying that use mushrooms? Uh, uh, a mí me encantaría. I love, I'm trying to think, mushroom specific. There's a lot of vegan restaurants, but I'm trying to think of vegan Latin American restaurants, which I just wrote um, mm. a piece on. There's a Puerto Rican spot that does vegan yeah. food with mushrooms. Um, the Black Rican Vegan is a is another Latin vegan spot. There's a Vodega. Vodega is a play on like oh, vegan good. Vodega. Uh -huh. A right. lot of good mushroom stuff there. If you're ever if you're ever out here, let's go. Let's go get a, Let's get some mushrooms. Let's do some it. mushrooms. Let's do it. Have you uh, you know like uh, Dirt Candy or any of those spots that are more? Yes, like, Chef Amanda Cohen. Like, yeah, yeah, Chef Amanda Cohen does amazing stuff. A lot of. Great mushrooms, vegan sustainability, really, really neat. Uh, I like Absolutely. cooking with mushrooms in my own home too, you know. That's why I'm so interested in like, how do I make this this sandwich? And could I actually make mm -hmm. it like you do at home? We're gonna have the recipe uh, to this, right? You are, uh, okay. absolutely. And you can make this at home. I mean, you see that I'm making it here. You do need a smoker. Um, okay. Could I use liquid smoke instead? No, absolutely not. Do not do that. Oh. So if you have okay. that in your kitchen, no. go to the cabinet and throw it away right now. Uh-oh. I just <laughs> lost some street cred with you, I think. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, but no. <laughs> but actually, no. No. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, but I think, you know, a smoking gun, those are cool. You can roast your mushrooms, throw some smoke on them. Um, that's mm -hmm. something that you can do in your house in a... Um, you know, New York sized apartment. I don't know. That's you mean a studio? <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, all right, I'm going to bring my plate over. So, y'all, this is fast and easy and delicious, right? So, I'm here, I'm melting my, my Swiss cheese on um, right on the mushrooms, right on my plancha or my comal or my griddle top. You hear it called different things. Mm -hmm. um, I have my pumpernickel dark bread here, right? And I have my mushrooms. So next step, if you see I've dressed my bread, I have mm -hmm. a little gooey, gooey sandwich here, some gooey cheese. And I've made this, if you see, I've made this almost perfectly to fit the bread, like I'm a chef or something. It's like you've done this before. I know, right? And then next step, I always like to get the like kind of caramelized cheese off the plancha. Mm. Uh, and then the next step would be to take this sauerkraut made by again our friend Hannah at Hand Can. I love, I love that all of these products, you know, the the bread is is done by um, a local miller. Um, which is Martin Springs Mill, you know, the, the, the mushrooms are grown locally. The cabbage is grown you... and then pickled locally. Look at this, y'all. All right, That's hold amazing. on, let's put this, let's put this, you know what, I'm gonna go back over to the other, other space where we have a little bit of better camera view. You see, I went pretty heavy on the dressing because I like a lot of dressing on mine. But also, when it gets, you know, I discussed earlier the um, the bread width or the bread thickness. And when you have your bread thin enough, you get to get more flavor, and that sauce has um, more of a presence. So I'm just going to take my serrated edge here, my serrated knife, and I'm going to cut through this. Mm. I almost thought your tattoo said mushrooms, not mom. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that looks amazing, chef. Um, they don't say mom. <laughs> they say wow, wow. Oh, wow, wow! I thought it was mom, mom, or mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> they say wow, wow, and then these are my pinkies are uh, the Oja Santa leaf. 
Ah, pues sí. Yep, so. No, you know, surprisingly, I am fully tattooed. Um, I don't have a mushroom tattoo. Oh. I actually have a friend who is, excuse me, I just took a bite of that. I also have a friend who is, uh, is designing a pretty big mushroom piece because I do have a one pretty big space left on me. Um, so we're working on it. But wow. I do not. We got to um, get a mushroom in there. I do have so, plenty of other things that are important to me, like an old dirty bastard portrait, like a, <laughs> um, an outcast what? crown tattoo, things like that, of that sort. I the think you just things. aged okay. yourself. <laughs> I did, didn't I? Oh, my. You mean it wasn't the gray hair and the, rest, <laughs> and the two, early 2000s restaurant stories? Um, okay, this all makes up for this incredible looking sandwich. Um, wow. What do y'all think? Um, clap to that. Chefs? No. Claps for that. That looks incredible. It's pretty delicious. I wish I could feed you. I wish you could too. I mean, but now I've got the recipe. I can make this this mushroom version myself. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Wow. So this is made. This is made with the um, with oyster mushrooms. But you know, you could probably do it with if you can't if you don't have mushroom oyster mushrooms available to you. You could probably do it with a, some, something very similar with a portobello mushroom. If you just slice kind of across that, so you have these nice. Think of like thin sliced um, meat piled on a on the bread that you might get from, uh, you know, cats's or some sort of <laughs> yeah. little belly. Um, sorry, that's this just the first a, thing that I grabbed. Um, yeah. Wow, this is you an can, incredible. You can treat it that same way. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. You can see, go overhead again. You can see like the slices of those oyster mushroom. And I think wow. the color, you know, it, it, it almost with that black dust that I've put over it, I'm mm -hmm. guessing here. You know, you can see like the, the difference in the color in that. It's just a really a beautiful thing. Wow, thank you so much, Chef. This looks incredible. Are you gonna take a bite of this for us and make us all jealous? I will. I just wanna <laughs> make sure everyone's ready for me. Don't, don't ask me a question mid-bite, please. I'll, <laughs> no start, I'll, like, I'll, I'll start to answer and then, okay. So we're gonna do a toast. Now, Again, with uh, with our company assembly, you could actually have this in your hands as well, and we could do this together. But that's for another event. So let's do our toast. Right, toast you. to you. Boom. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Qué rico! Oh my god. I meant to say salud. Um, sí, y buen provecho. So yeah, I hope that you all have enjoyed. Um, watching the, the construction of the sandwich and then my sloppy bite. Um, yeah. I haven't perfected eating, eating on screen yet. Uh, this is <laughs> something I'm working on next. We will work on it. Thank you so much, Chef Philip Spear. Everybody, this is chef and owner of Comedor, Chef Philip Spear, making today a smoked oyster mushroom pastrami Reuben. That's right. And now we can all make it because we all have the recipe, so we have no excuses. Thank you so much for joining us on the second live stream of the Mushroom Council's month-long series about everything mushrooms. I cannot wait to get my mouth into that sandwich. Thank you, chef. Absolutely. And we'll see you a few more times with the Mushroom Council this month. I'm looking forward to, to all the events that we get to do um, in collaboration with the Mushroom Council. And it was really a pleasure to meet you, Marisol. Um, and I hope that you have learned something new about mushrooms. Um, oh, yeah. Perfecto. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, all for right. tuning in. Thank you.